Hello, welcome to this virtual tour of Hypops. Hypops is a virtual platform management utility for mobile devices. Uh, currently supports the iPhone and the iPad and provides support for uh, Zen server hypervisors, the Amazon Cloud, and the Cloud Stack Clouds. Um, today we're going to run through the feature set for the Zen server platform um, and specifically show it running on the uh, iPhone platform, although it will equally well run on the iPad. So let's start. So to begin with, obviously you're going to have to download the app from the from the store. And when you fire it up, first thing you're going to need to do is to create a connection to your Zen server. So you can either do that by selecting the button here or the plus button in the corner here um, and choose send server and go ahead and fill in the connection details, the address, the username, the password etc. Uh, or there is another way. Um, so if you go to the Hypops web website which is hypops.org.uk uh, on this page here this email a connection to advice link has a useful little widget here which allows you to type in an email address. So this will be the email address you want to send a connection to. So um, connection name, so Zen Server Demo. Obviously it's Zen Server in this particular case, but you can create the other connection types too. A connection address, so this could be an IP address or a fully qualified address. A username, that's probably root. And optionally a password. You don't have to fill a password in here. If you do, it'll go into the um, email. It won't be displayed as text in the email, but you'll be able to see it behind a, uh, a link. And when that reaches the device, the connection will just work transparently. Alternatively, if you leave it blank, it won't go in the email and the end user at the other end will be asked to provide the password to complete the connection details. So when you've done that, you can hit email. And because I'm running this on a simulator, not going to be able to um, fully demonstrate it, but I'll show you a slightly different way. What will happen um, is you will receive an email on the device, looks like this, and it has three links in it. The bottom one just allows if you sent it to anybody who hasn't got Hypops to click that on their iPhone or iPad and it'll go straight to the store and download the app for them. The top two here allow you to create connections either as a permanent connection that appears in their management list and they can keep reusing or just as a simple one-off launch of a connection. The second one just launches the connection, allows you to browse on the hypervisor but when you come out it's not in your connection list so it's a just a temporary connection. So I'm just going to copy that link and do what would have happened if you just, oops, type it in by, by just pasting it into the browser. Okay, the application fires up and the connection appears in my list. And if it hadn't had a password in it, I could edit it and fill the password in here or when I actually launch the connection, it would have popped up a dialog asking me for the password. So you can leave the password blank in here permanently and not store it in the iPhone at all and enter it each time. Um, once you've got a connection on a device, in the same way we just emailed the connection to the device from the website, you can email connections to other people from your device by just sit and send email and it create an email very, very similar to the one you, just, you saw before, you just enter the name. And send it. Okay, so back to the app. Okay, so now we've got our Zen server connection defined. Let's go and explore the uh, environment. So when you get the connection, you get a list of the main objects that exist in that in the Zen server hypervisor. You've got hosts and virtual machines. These are the two 
interesting ones really and then templates and storage in the network so let's start at the top and let's get to the more interesting ones first so let's select host now I've only got one host in my Zen server pool here and it's my Zen server that I use at home for managing my iTunes so uh, I have one row in here there would be if there were many hosts in your pool you'd see many rows down here and the little green arrow here gives you an indication immediately that this hyper, this host is not in maintenance mode it is up and um, active so I'll select the host and you get presented with what becomes a standard pattern through the whole the whole application a page which has a title at the top describing the the label and description for the for the host a set of tabs across the bottom here um, which provide you different aspects of managing that object and some content in the center that provides the detail for that so at the moment we're looking at the general details for the host and you can see what version it was when the host was started it's not in maintenance mode you know, fairly standard um, things you go down here and you can see the management connection IP address the license information and CPU information. Now you'll notice that on several of these there was this performance data um, row that's got the little graph icon in the corner. If you select that graph you can see the performance data for the um, appropriate thing you selected and you can see 10 minutes, you can go back to the last two hours, seven days bit of heavy usage there um, over a year if you want to and indeed if you rotate it you'll see that uh, you can get an even better view of the, the data now I can't show you on the simulator but um, if you pinch and zoom around the graph you can move around it just like you would you would expect once you've seen that performance data you'll notice in here it shows you the date and time it was updated so if you go back into the graph it won't go and fetch all that data again it will just use the data it's already stored. If you really want to update it, you can use this refresh button here and it will go and re retrieve it again up to date. Um, the performance data is retrieved for all of these elements. So when I got the CPU data, I also got the memory data. So you'll now see that the memory data is just available to be read without another download. So this saves you having to keep putting the data down from the, the server. It stops the battery dying on your iPhone too quickly. So that's the general tab. In the network tab, again, I've only got one NIC attached to my um, host, but it will show you the details of um, the networks. Again, you can see the performance of the network, the throughput, the um, if you wish, um, storage. So this lists all of the storage that is attached. So as usual, you've got a Zen Server Tools repository. You've got some local storage, uh, you've got your DVD drives and your removable storage and as you can see when you expand it you can see the type of the storage, um, you can get these by IntelliCache, the, the sort of things you'd expect to see and again the, the performance data will show you the usage of that storage. And last, um, and possibly one of the more useful things at the moment actually is that you've got a console view. So, um, if you hit the console, you'll now see that we are looking at the Zen server console itself. And you'll notice that the screen on the right here, 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 which is the simulator's way of showing a externally collected monitor, um, shows the display in full screen, whereas on the iPhone it's sort of crammed into the, the display. Um, if you've got a hardware display connected um, via HDMI, or you have got an AirPlay device, this will all work um, with the, the display. Again, also if you've got a hardware keyboard, you can use the hardware keyboard. If you've got a Bluetooth keyboard, it'll work with a Bluetooth keyboard. Um, if you haven't, you can use the on-screen keyboard, but <laughs> on, certainly on the iPhone, you are really limiting the amount of space you've got to, uh, to use the device. You can use a three-finger touch to bring up a menu, um, or if it, on a keyboard, you can use the Alt and Control keys together. If I uh, submit the hardware keyboard, um, 
because I can't do a three finger touch in the simulator. Uh, so at this point, you can do things like send awkward or delete. And if you didn't have an external monitor, this full screen would enable you to display um, the console full screen by removing the tabs and the title bars to give you more space on the, the phone. And then the three finger touch will come back and do it. And again, the show keyboard will bring up the keyboard. I see we've got a hardware keyboard at the moment. That's uh, relevant. So if we, again, you can see. working and we can go up and down and do anything you would normally do on a sensor of a console. Obviously if maybe you to run any command line utilities that you need to run in an emergency that the actual app itself doesn't provide any simple uh, input for. So it's console and for the host so that's quite a useful thing. So now we go all the way back to the list of objects again for the pool. We're going to have a look at the VMs. Now you'll see that this is fairly similar to the host, except the first page for the VMs categorizes them into um, running or stopped or suspended or tagged. Actually, I haven't got any tagged ones here at the moment, but if you have got tagged ones, when you go across, you'll get a list by tag, so you can filter down large numbers of VMs fairly quickly this way. Um, let's go and look at all the VMs in this particular case. So you can see I've got two VMs. Instantly you can see that one's running and one's stopped. And let's just have a quick look at the stopped one. Again, you'll notice it's exactly the same pattern as before. The information at the top and the tabs at the bottom and the information in the middle. So that in the general tab shows information in exactly the same way as the um, hosts. And again, things like CPU can view the performance data. Now there's separate performance data for each virtual machine, so it will need to load the performance data of the virtual machine and display it. Interesting. Let's try again. There we go. Uh, that was the timed out before the uh, which was good. Okay, so you can see in the same way as before performance graph. And again, you'll notice that it took quite a long to load, time to load because there's a lot of data. But because it's loaded once, we now click on it, we're straight back in. Um, so that's been cached the same way as for the, the host was. Um, the other thing you will notice so on this page is that some of these properties, I've got an enabled arrow bar at the side of them. So if you choose these navigators, you can actually update the data for the virtual machine. So let's let's make this one auto boot. So that's now the auto boot. You can also click on the title and edit the title or the description of the virtual machine if you uh, if you wish to from here. Um, and just like the host one, if we move across from general we've got disks tab. So you can see the drives that are attached to the virtual machine. See how big it is. Performance data again. Now for the VMs additionally, you have got a control tab, which allows you to power manage the machine. And snapshot tab, which allows you to not only see the snapshots that are currently assigned to the virtual machine, and if you click over here, you can see the um, lineage of the snapshots you can see which one was taken from which one so if you've got a tree you can follow that around you can also take more snapshots you can revert to a snapshot you can delete a snapshot if you wish um, so there is a console tab but it's not going to show us very much for stopped vm so let's go back to the running machine okay so let's on this one let's just jump to the console window okay and straight away you can see the external monitor displaying full screen, the console of the virtual machine. You also get to see it on the screen so that when you click around, you can see where you're, you're clicking. Um, it passes through the Windows key, and if you're using the built-in keyboard, 
that's what if I turn off the simple hover keyboard you get a toolbar at the top it allows you push to push the windows key the escape key and the the cursor keys in addition to all the standard keys so that uh, you can uh, use those features which aren't provided on the uh, on the keyboard and actually if you're using the external keyboard and you show the keyboard you still get these keys appear even though you don't get the main keyboard which can be useful at times um, so if we let's just go into here and let's let's fire up the notepad as well okay so you can say hello this is a demo and you can see that highlighting and deleting works so it's a fairly functional display uh, certainly allow you to see what's going on inside your virtual machines um, while you're running. Of course if you um, rotate your device sideways you can see the console sideways as well um, which is a bit more like the uh, the ratio aspect ratio of uh, the screen as well which is a bit more useful because it always tries to stretch the screen to the display. Okay, so let's come off the machines. Oh, all right, the catch me. <laughs> and just very briefly show what's on the other the other pages. We've got templates, which is just a list of all of the templates that are available on the server. At the moment you can't do anything with those. We've got storage. So again, you can't it just list the storage that's connected to your sensor. You can't do anything with those at the moment. And the networks show which networks are available on the sensor. The host pool, but you can't uh, can't do anything with them at the moment either. So that's a virtual tour through the uh, version 4.4 of Hypops, showing you all the Zen server functionality. If you want to know more, you can jump onto my uh, Facebook page, uh, Hypops, and leave some messages and see this video, um, or onto the website. And if you have any feedback or um, information, you can provide it through that, those mechanisms. So thanks for watching, and uh, look out for more videos and functionality to come later.